Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Auto Enrollment is Changing, Don't Get Left Behind. We've just completed a sound check 10 minutes ago with people who logged on early, so we're going to get started. Um, apologies in advance, I just have a bit of a cold on me, so, so hopefully my voice will last for the duration of the webinar. Okay. So to introduce myself, my name is Karen Bennett and I'm the Marketing Manager here at BrightPay. Today's webinar has been designed to give you an insight into upcoming changes happening this year, including new employers, phasing and re-enrolment. Today's webinar is CPD accredited and you can benefit from 1.5 CPD points. If you'd like a CPD cert, please fill in the survey at the end of today's webinar and we will send out the CPD certs within the next few days. You're, you're quite welcome to type in any questions that you have throughout the webinar on your question tab there on your control panel, and we will have a Q&A session at the end of today's um, session. Today's webinar is being recorded. We will automatically send you a copy of the recording along with the slides in the follow-up email. So here is the agenda for today's webinar. Auto-enrolment, what's the point? Auto-enrolment in new employers, increasing minimum contributions, integration between payroll and pension providers, re-enrolment and re-declaration of compliance, uh, how BrightPay automates auto-enrolment, and we'll also have a quick introduction to BrightPay Connect. So auto-enrolment, what's the point? We'll keep this part brief, as I'm sure you're all familiar with how auto-enrolment works at this stage. So in recent years, people living in the UK are healthier and as a result are living longer. Currently, the majority of people in the UK are not saving enough for their retirement. The pensions regulator and the government have thus brought in automatic enrolment to tackle this very important issue. As a result, all employees aged between 22 and state pension age and who earn more than £10,000 must be enrolled into an automatic enrolment pension scheme by their employer. Employees who are not in this worker category have the option to opt in or join the workplace pension scheme instead. So auto-enrolment is well and truly evolved since the rollout began in 2012. Last year, over 750,000 small and micro employers reached their staging date, making it the biggest year yet for auto-enrolment. Last year, we also saw the final stages of the rollout of the staging date process. There are a number of new changes coming within the next 12 months that payroll bureaus need to be aware of. So first up, we have auto-enrollment and new employers. Since the rollout of auto-enrollment began in 2012, all employers have had a staging date which kick-starts their employer responsibilities. Perhaps one of the biggest changes for the year ahead is how new employers will handle auto-enrollment. Although the rollout of the staging dates does not end until February 2018, from October last year, all new employers will be affected by auto-enrollment with immediate effect. And worryingly, according to research conducted by the pensions regulator, almost half of bookkeepers and accountants did not know that new employers would have auto-enrollment duties. So if a client becomes a new employer after the 1st of October 2017, they will not have a staging date. Instead, they will have a duties start date, which will kick-start their auto-enrollment duties. Your clients should be ready to comply with their legal auto-enrollment duties as soon as the first employee begins employment, ranking equal to PAYE and NIC. Where your client is a new employer and about to employ someone for the first time, they will need to complete certain tasks in preparation for auto-enrollment. Once they have registered as an employer with HMRC, you or your client will need to inform the pensions regulator of the chosen point of contact for auto-enrollment. So just like when an employer reaches their staging date, the new employer will be required to choose a pension scheme that will be suitable to their business and to their employees. On the first pay date after the duties start date, similar to staging, all employees must be assessed to determine whether, they not, whether or not they need to be automatically enrolled into a pension scheme. Any eligible employees must be automatically enrolled into the pension scheme where the employer must also make contributions to the pension pot. 
All employees must receive communications informing them of how auto enrollment will affect them and what their rights are. So just to make sure you're all paying attention, we have a quick poll to qualify for the CPD requirements. So the question is, as of the 1st of October 2017, when do new employers have auto enrollment responsibilities? If you could type your answer into the question tab on your control panel, please. So is the answer A, the employer will receive a staging date from the pensions regulator, B, as soon as the first employee commences employment, or C, at the start of the next tax year? So A, the employer will receive a staging date from the pensions regulator, B, as soon as the first employee commences employment, or C, at the start of the next tax year. Okay, so I can see that most of you are paying attention and 98% answered correctly. And the answer is B, as soon as the first employee commences employment. <clears throat> so next up, we'll have a look at minimum contributions rate, minimum contribution rates for automatic enrollment, which are set to increase this coming April. There's two stages to the increase in minimum contributions, which have been described as phasing. The first increase will take place this April and the second increase in April 2019. On the 6th of April 2018, the total minimum contribution will increase from 2% to 5%. Employers will need to contribute a minimum of 2% with employees contributing the remaining 3%. Minimum contributions will undergo further increases in April 2019 with the total minimum contribution rate increasing to 8%, representing a 3% employer and 5% employee contribution. It is an employer's responsibility to make sure they are prepared for these new contribution levels. If the employer wishes, and they are very generous, they can decide to pay the total minimum contribution rate, which is 5% from April 2018 and 8% from April 2019. In these cases, the employee does not have to pay any contributions unless the rule of the pension scheme say otherwise. The employer and the employee can also choose to contribute a higher amount to the pension scheme if they wish. Now, if an employer chooses to pay more than the employer minimum, but less than the total minimum amount, then the employee must make up the difference. Your payroll software should easily and automatically calculate the phased increases for you. So it's important that you check with your chosen pension scheme and payroll software to see if they can support the phased minimum rates. Pension providers should already be taking steps to ensure they can help their customers comply with the increased rates. If you are looking after auto enrollment for your clients, it will be your responsibility to make sure that the correct amount of pension contributions is being deducted. And of course, it would be recommended that you inform your clients about the upcoming increases to prepare them. There is no legal requirement to send communications to employees informing them of the increases. However, simple and clear communication will make it easier for your client staff to understand the phased contribution rates and hopefully reduce the number of opt-outs. New employers who reach their duty state, duties start date on or after the 6th of April 2018 will be Im immediately required to comply and implement the total minimum 5% contribution rate. Equally, new employers who reach their duty start date on or after the 6th of April 2019 will need to comply with the total minimum 8% contribution rate. So integration between payroll and pension systems. This year, we will see an increasing number of key pension providers developing an API option that will allow the payroll software to fully integrate with them. Certain pension providers, such as Nest, have made real headway in terms of automation. Direct API integration allows payroll software and the pension scheme to communicate or talk directly to each other, which is a very similar concept to RTI. API integration means that users no longer need to, need to export and save the data file to their PC and then log into the pension provider's web portal to upload the pension data. Instead, data can be sent directly to the pension provider at the click of a button from within the payroll software. And I'm sure at this stage, the majority of you have already used the Nest API with your current payroll provider. 
So this method of sending information between two systems will be of particular interest to bureaus who have a large number of payroll clients. The integration will enable bureaus to reduce errors and minimize the time spent submitting the client's file to the pension provider each pay period. At the moment, BrightPay has API integration with Nest um, Smart Pension, and coming over the next couple of months will also be the very first payroll provider to offer API integration with Aviva to our customers. BrightPay has further APIs with Nest. One is to validate groups and payment sources, and two is to approve contribution payments from within the software. This integration further streamlines the setup and ongoing tasks involved when using Nest as your pension provider. We will offer further API integration with other pension providers this year. Currently, we are working with two other pension providers, including the, pensions, uh, the People's Pension. So we'd hope to have this API integration available um, this year. Now, the API integration with pension providers is actually developed by the pension provider themselves, where the payroll software can integrate or plug into their API facility. So it's very much up to the pension provider themselves to offer this facility where payroll providers can plug into their system. So next up, we have re-enrollment. Every three years, employers must put certain members of staff back into an auto-enrollment pension scheme, and this is called re-enrollment. Some of the larger companies have already gone through the re-enrollment process. Your duties will vary depending on whether or not you have staff to re-enroll. The first step is to choose your re-enrollment date, and this should be done as soon as possible. Your re-enrollment date is chosen by you with a six-month window to choose from. Therefore, you may decide to align your re-enrollment date with other business processes such as the start of your financial year or to avoid seasonal peak. This re-enrollment window falls three months either side of the third anniversary of your staging date. Regardless of whether or not you have used postponement at your staging <coughs> date, re-enrollment occurs three years after your staging date and not your deferral date. The chosen re-enrollment date will apply to all staff. You can choose different dates for different staff members or groups of staff. Also be aware the postponement cannot be used for re-enrollment. Once you reach your re-enrollment date, you will need to assess certain staff to work out if you need to put them back into your pension scheme. You only need to assess staff who have previously opted out or voluntarily ceased active membership of a qualifying scheme. You must determine whether these employees meet the criteria to be automatically re-enrolled. So you must re-enroll anyone who left your auto-enrollment pension scheme more than 12 months before your re-enrollment date, is aged between 22 and state pension age, earns over the earnings threshold which is currently £10,000 per annum. You also have the option to re-enroll various staff members for example, directors, those who are a partner in a limited liability partnership, those who left the scheme within 12 months of your re-enrollment date, those who have been given notice or who have given notice at the end of their employment. Having worked out which staff must be re-enrolled, you must now put them back into the pension scheme within six weeks of your re-enrollment date. It is your legal duty to write to each member of staff you have re-enrolled into your pension scheme. This also must be completed six weeks after your re-enrollment date. You do not have to write to staff that are not being put back into the pension scheme. All employers must complete the re-declaration of compliance, even if you do not have staff to re-enroll into your pension scheme. This informs the pensions regulator that you have completed your automatic re-enrollment duties. So make sure that your chosen payroll software can handle the re-enrollment process and ensure there is no additional charge for auto-enrollment or re-enrollment functionality with your chosen payroll provider. So <clears throat> how BrightPay automates auto-enrollment. For employers or bureaus on their behalf, completing the upcoming auto-enrollment duties can seem like a lot of extra work. It can be especially daunting when there are so many changes coming within the next, few, uh, the next year. So fortunately, it does not have to be as difficult as it seems. 
It is not a legal requirement to use software to process auto-enrolment. However, both HMRC and the Pensions Regulator recommend that employers utilise payroll software that supports the process of auto-enrolment for new employers, phasing, re-enrolment and offer API integration with the main pension providers. Employers who continue to use HMRC's basic PAYE tools will be one of the most at-risk groups for auto-enrolment non-compliance, as this tool does not and will not properly support auto-enrolment. Assessing the workforce and calculating contributions manually will lead to an additional workload and a higher risk of non-compliance. So BrightPay allows bureaus to seamlessly process auto-enrolment with minimal workload required. At BrightPay, we are compatible with 18 pension providers and have direct API integration with Nest and Smart, and um, a few more are, are, are going to be developed this year. So users can drastically reduce their workload when it comes to sending pension files directly through to the pension provider. We have recently added new functionality to cater for new employers and re-enrollment, and come the 6th of April 2018, BrightPay will seamlessly handle the increases for minimum contributions to ensure that you are fully compliant with, auto, with the auto-enrollment legislation. So I'm now going to hand you over um, to Vicky to take you through um, how easy it is for auto-enrollment to be used um, in BrightPay. Today's demo is based on a new employer and will demonstrate how BrightPay can automate the entire process. So Vicky is our support manager here at BrightPay and very much on the front line when it comes to dealing with support needs for our customers. So thank you, Vicky. Many thanks, Karen, and good morning, everybody. Um, just bear with me there. We'll like, just bring up the software for you. Okay. So as Karen's just mentioned, my, my demonstration company this morning is a new employer. Um, so the starting point is to first establish a uh, Sorry, to first establish what your due to start date is. And if you are unsure, we have built in a number of workflows into the BrightPay software to help you determine what this date is. So you'll see here that I'm just in my payroll screen. I'm commencing for the first time in week 42 here. Um, but you'll see here if I click into an employee, um, just in the payroll utility here, I'm getting the prompt that I must enter my due to start date. So I'm just going to click on the option here and this takes me through to my pensions utility. So here you'll see the number of workflows we've built in. You've three here to choose from. So first of all, if you have been employing staff since before October 2017, you have this option here. And this one will give the option to connect to the pensions regulators website to retrieve your due to start date from them. Okay, just click back here. You then have the option to enter, um, sorry, to choose the option that my first staff member has started um, on or after the 1st of October 2017. And also to say that you are exempt from auto enrollment if that's applicable to you, so single director companies, for example. So this is a brand new company. And um, I have my employees set up to commence employment with me on the 15th of January. So I'm going to choose this second option here to say that my first staff member has started after the 1st of October. This then tells me that my due to start date um, is when my first staff member begins with me. So I'm just going to click on save changes here. And then I'm going to enter the 15th of January as my commencement date there for my first staff member. I'm now going to save the change as well. The next step then is to then enter details of the pension scheme that you have chosen or that your, um, your client has chosen. So staying within the pensions utility, I'm going to click on add new scheme. And you'll see here that BrightPay currently supports, there's 18 pension providers listed here for you. And that means that BrightPay can actually produce the required pension files for upload into these pension providers. So we have that all pre-programmed in for you. If um, the pension provider chosen isn't one of the 18 listed, then we do have the other automatic enrollment scheme option here, where you as the user can set up the um, scheme from scratch, really, the end of the details. I suppose just bear in mind then that the pension files for upload can't be created 
in BrightPay um, when you choose that option. So you just need to log into your pension portal and enter those manually. Okay. So for easiness today, and as Karen's mentioned, um, this pension provider already, we will we'll use Nest. So I'm just going to choose Nest from my listing here. All you need to do is then just fill in the information required. So this is just asking for my employer reference. On these screens, all this information would be available from, you know, from the pension provider that you've signed up with. Okay. And then I'm going to click into the next tab here, which is group. Um, all pension providers usually require you to set up categories or groups for your, for your employees. Let's work using group names. So I'm just going to enter the group name here. So I'll you know, we'll, we'll take, you know, just make an assumption I've set up a group in my Nest account called Weekly. You're then asked to select the contribution type that you have opted for. And if I click on the drop down menu here, you'll see the various items available. Our default is to use the phased minimum contribution rates there, okay? But you can also then go straight to use the 2019 minimum contribution rates if desired. Also, to customize the contribution rates to suit your needs, um, it's where that gives the user the option just to type in the, the different amounts for the, you know, the, the percentage rates for the employer and the employee, as long as they're meeting the minimum. And also to use a fixed amount each pay period as well, should you wish to opt for a fixed amount rather than the percentage. The phased minimum contribution rates that we default to, um, as Karen has mentioned, the new rates are, are coming into effect from the 6th of April 2018. And if you have this selected in your software at the time of setting up your pension scheme, when you begin the new tax year, so in BrightPay 1819, that means that the software will automatically uplift the, the, you know, the new pension rates of 2% and 3%. They will automatically kick in in the software for you. So there'll be no manual um, uplifting of the percentages for you. So that's when you have the phased minimum contribution rates selected here. You then um, need to just choose the earnings basis that is to apply, so whether you're um, applying the standard qualifying earnings or whether you wish to customize these. For example, some people choose to remove the limits. So if they want the pension contribution to be on the full pay, then you opt for removing the limits here. Okay, so we'll just stick with the defaults today here. If you have further groups set up in, um, uh, sorry, with your pension provider, then you just repeat that process. So, for example, if I have monthly staff, I may have set up a group in my Nest account called monthly as well. Repeat the process of choosing the contribution type and the earnings basis, and you click on save here. Okay, so that's the setting up of the auto enrollment in the in the BrightPay software. When I now return to my payroll utility, <clears throat> I'm in my first pay period here, so week 42, and you'll now see that my duty start date has been detected, and you'll now see the appearance of online flags and yellow alerts appearing for each of my employees. So my first employee here um, is being assessed as an eligible job holder for me, <coughs> excuse me, and if I click on view options, Okay, you'll see that I'm given three options for this worker category. So I can now enroll her, I can postpone or mark as exempt here. So in this instance, we'll enroll the employee. So you can see the enrollment date is the same date as the due to start date. I'm going to click on my scheme drop down and, and I'm going to choose weekly here. And then you just need to choose the tax relief applicable. In this instance, it's relief at source. It's the only one available other than non. Um, so by default, it's relief at source for you. And then if I press continue, that will enroll that one employee for you. If you have multiple employees to enroll with the same settings as above, then you can use this little shortcut to enroll them all at the same time. So I'm going to click on enroll multiple employees, select them all, and those five employees are now enrolled quite quickly for you. So BrightPay will also take care of the communications for you. Um, um, so in this instance where I've enrolled um, a number of employees, BrightPay will now automatically create the enrollment letter for you to give to those employees. To generate this letter, you can click, um, click on the letter option here. And the enrollment letters can be printed, they can be exported to PDF, or they can be emailed as well, depending on your requirements. 
I just generate a print preview to screen for you to see that it's all automated for you. You have nothing to do other than choose the option for getting the, the letter to the recipient here. Okay, so it's all done for you. Okay. And once the um, employees have received their enrollment letters, you can then mark as done. And again, just to speed things up for you, um, where you have a number of employees that have been enrolled, you can actually do them in a batch, those letters, and again, mark as done for multiple employees. So again, I'll just select the five employees there. And I've now completed their automatic enrollment duties there. So you'll see their flags have disappeared. <coughs> My next employee is being an, um, assessed by the software automatically as a non-eligible job holder. So if I click on view options for him, I'm given four options this time. So you do have an obligation to write to the employee, telling them that they do have a right to opt into the pension scheme if they choose to do so. If they do choose to opt in, you have the opt in button to put that into effect to postpone and mark as exempt. And again, with um, non-eligible job holders and entitled workers, we automatically create those um, letters for you to give to the employees. So again, preview on screen, it's all done for you. And then mark as done as soon as the employee is in receipt of that. My next employee then is um, an example of an entitled worker. Okay, and again, the options are very, very similar for this worker category as they are for non-eligible um, job holders. So again, um, BrightPay will automatically produce their right to join letter. If they choose to join, you have the join option here to postpone and mark as exempt. So BrightPay will handle postponement, as you can see. And if you do choose to implement postponement, um, all you need to do is choose the postpone button here. Okay, choose your deferral date. So any date within the next three months, um, so three months after your assessment date. I'll just go for the 1st of March here. And again, um, you can choose just to postpone this one employee by pressing continue. Or if you wish to postpone more than one employee to the same deferral date, you can use this option to postpone multiple employees. So I'm just going to choose those three employees there. Okay, and again, BrightPay will automatically produce the postponement letter that you must give to those employees. Okay, and I'll just mark those as done here now. Okay, so when I return back to my payroll screen here, you'll see all my flags have disappeared, so I've, I've, I've dealt with everybody at this stage. If I just choose an employee for whom um, they have been enrolled, you will now see their pension contributions flowing through onto their payslip here. If I finalize this pay period and just do a print pre preview of their pay slips here that are available for printing or emailing, you'll see that the pay slip will also reference the pension contribution for both the employee and the employer there. Okay. <coughs> so you'll now see that a number two has appeared next to my pensions utility. And this is now to notify me that I now have two pension files that I must submit to my pension provider. If I click in here, um, Nest is an example of a pension provider that actually requires two files. Um, so first of all, if you enroll anybody, they require you to put through an enrollment submission to let them know who you're enrolling. And also then they require periodic contribution submissions to report the contributions you're, you're, you're taking from those employees. So on the menu bar, I have my enrollment summary option here. As Karen has mentioned already, Nest um, have an API option. So this means that the submissions can go straight from BrightPay into Nest. Um, so it will avoid having to basically create and save a CSV file and then log in and upload that CSV file. So this is really a one-step process compared to a two-step process for you. Um, to submit my enrollment submission, all I need to do is click on the send enrollment submission option here. I am getting a little box here just to tell me that I may have errors. It's simply because I'm in a test environment, so I'm just going to switch that message off there. Um, I choose the employees I wish to include. Click on next. Next again. And literally click send now to submit that enrollment submission to Nest. There, so very, very seamless. What happens then is at the top here, you'll, once that has been successfully received by Nest, you'll get confirmation through in this yellow box here to say that your submission was successful. 
Okay, do allow a little bit of time for that just to come back into you. Once the enrolment submission has been accepted, you are then able to pop through the contributions um, submission as well. Okay, and again, if I just click into the contributions summary, here is my submission that BrightPay has automatically created for me. I'm just going to click on send submission. Okay, I just need to fill in a little bit of information here again. I'm just going to put some dummy dates in. All this information here would be available um, as we're using Nest today, um, you know, in your Nest account. So nothing really um, should be, uh, really come as a surprise here. You know, all the information is obtainable from, from your Nest account. Click on Next there. Okay, just go through the various steps. If there's anybody for, for whatever reason that hasn't made a contribution in this pay period, you have the option to, to say why. Okay, click Next and at step four, um, you are ready to submit that submission. Simply click Send Now. Okay, and again, once successfully received, you'll get notif notification back in up at, up at this top section here for you. Okay, so basically going forward then, if I just go back into my pay or utility, that's my first pay period completed. Going to, to the, my next period then. So in the background, BrightPay is continuously monitoring your staff for you for auto enrollment. Um, if no flags appear, then everything is fine. You've no duties to perform. And if I just choose this employee here, let's just say I just increase his pay in the next pay period. You'll see then that BrightPay has kicked in for you and said, OK, now he's now an eligible job holder. And the yellow alert will then inform you that you now have another auto enrollment duty to perform there. OK. If an employee chooses to opt out within their opt out window, then we do facilitate that to in BrightPay. Um, say my first employee here, I've received an, an official opt out notice from the pension provider. I just go into the employee utility here, select that employee, and every employee has an automatic enrollment utility on their menu bar. Here, if they've been enrolled, you will now have an opt out button, which you click on to. Okay, just read the screen there, and if happy, you press continue. Okay, I'm just going to say yes. I want to opt her out. When I return to the payroll screen then, you will then see that um, she will be refunded any pension contributions that she's made to date. So you can see that refund happening here, and also any employer pension contribution as well will be refunded as well. Okay, so that option is also in the software. Okay, at any time, if you wish to generate any automatic enrollment reports, they can be done by going to the analysis function. And if I click on new and just pop into to do a new payroll report, um, I'll just show you here now if I just go into add and remove columns. Um, various options are available for generating an automatic enrollment report. You'll see here, for example, that you can run reports on worker categories, enrollment dates, opt-in dates, etc., opt-out dates, you'll see there. And also, if you wish to maybe have a periodic contributions report, you can choose these options here as well. Okay. I just run that report here and um, you can generate your own automatic enrollment reports as well and these can be saved so that you you know you can save it to the your favorites bar so as an example so that you can access that each pay period if required here okay Karen mentioned there as well, she talked about re-enrollment, and obviously the demo company here is a new employer, so re-enrollment won't be on the radar for a, a long time yet. But you'll see here when um, I'm in my pensions utility, and if I just go into the automatic enrollment section here, as soon as your due to start date is um, determined in the software, we do then automatically um, fill in the re-enrollment field for you as well. So we do three years exactly from your due to start date. As Karen mentioned, that you do have a six-month window um, of that date, so it can be three months before or three months <coughs> after. So if required, you can come in here and change that date as required. With re-enrollment, um, those flags that we've seen in the software just now when the duty start date was reached, re-enrollment will work exactly the same way. So if the software determines 
any employees that meet the criteria, criteria for re-enrollment, um, you'll get the series of flags and alerts for you to act upon there. Okay, so that, is, that completes my part there. So I'll just hand you back to okay. Karen. Good, thanks, Vicky. That's super. Okay. Okay, we're also just going to do a quick introduction to Bright Pay Connect um, before we have the Q&A session. Um, okay. So Bright Pay Connect is our new add-on product which works alongside Bright Pay Payroll. It offers a number of additional features to bureaus, employers and employees, including a secure and automated cloud backup, employee self-service, an employer dashboard, annual leave management, employee document upload and, and so much more. So rather than explain everything about Bright Pay Connect, I'm just going to play you a two minute video so we can quickly show you the benefits for your payroll bureau. Welcome to Bright Pay Connect, our latest cloud add-on that works alongside Bright Pay Payroll. With Bright Pay Connect, you can automatically store payroll information in the cloud and enable online access anywhere, anytime for you, your clients and their employees. You'll be up and running in seconds. Secure online backup. Automatically synchronize and backup data to the cloud, protecting against ransomware and cyber attacks. Bureau Client Dashboard. Online access to clients' payroll information. Invite clients to their own online dashboard, which can be branded with your bureau's logo. Clients can access payslips, payroll reports, annual leave requests, amounts due to HMRC and employee documents. Employee self-service portal. Invite employees to their own online portal. Employees can view and download payslips, P60s and P45s. Easily submit holiday requests. View leave taken and leave remaining. HR and annual leave management. View all upcoming leave in the BrightPay Connect company-wide calendar. Authorize leave requests with changes automatically flowing back to the payroll. Upload HR documents, including employee contracts and handbooks. Book a demo today to see how BrightPay Connect can enhance your payroll service offering. So um, today we gave you a quick introduction of BrightPay Payroll and BrightPay Connect. But if you do want more information, we do run online demos of both systems almost every day. The demos are free to attend and last approximately 20 minutes. Um, and I suppose it's an opportunity for you to have any of your specific questions answered about BrightPay. Um, just before I finish up, I'd like to say that BrightPay's Bureau license includes unlimited employers, unlimited employees, auto-enrollment functionality and free phone and email support for just 229 plus VAT per tax year. Um, at the moment for BrightPay 1718, we do have a 50% off offer with one free BrightPay Connect license. Um, so if you do want to avail of that offer, just send us an email. The Bureau license also includes CIS, payrolling of benefits, batch sending RTI submissions, and a payroll journal export to accounting packages. So this year we will be running a series of free CPD webinars on GDPR, employment law, law and more news about auto-enrollment. We will be working with guest speakers along the way too. Our previous guest speakers include Nest, Aviva, Steve Pipe, The People's Pension and Colin Dunn. With the new GDPR legislation, you must subscribe to our newsletters to hear about these upcoming free CPD events, and you can un unsubscribe at any time. Our newsletter also includes special offers and discounts throughout the year. So a reminder to fill out the survey at the end of today's webinar to request your, your CPD cert. So we'll now go through our questions and answers, and I'm joined with um, Vicky, our, our support manager here. So we're going to, I suppose we'll be reading the questions as, as we're answering them as well. So there just might be a couple of minutes delays in between each question as we address the next question. 
and um, yeah, we'll get through as many as we can. If we don't get through what um, your question, you know, we can, we will get back to you, or you can email our support at brightpay.co.uk. Um, okay. Vicky, yeah. You... Okay. So the first question in is, how do I alter the new minimum auto enrollment rates in BrightPay? I have used BrightPay for about eighteen months now, and all employees are enrolled. Can we take that one, Karen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully, I showed you that. I mean, it all depends on the settings you've selected in BrightPay. So I showed you there the pension setup, and you have the option to choose the contribution type that's to be in effect. If you, so basically, if you've used um, the option to use phased minimum rates, BrightPay will automatically uplift your percentages for you. So when you do your import from um, BrightPay 1718 into 1819 BrightPay, you will see those percentages uplifted automatically for you. Now, in the event that you've gone for one of the other options or you have chosen to use phased minimum contribution rates, but for whatever reason you've overridden them on the employee pay slip, you know, maybe you've gone for a fixed amount then at a later date. Um, obviously bright pay won't be able to automatically uplift for you. So what we're going to do instead is build in a number of alerts for you so that in that first pay period in which the 6th of April falls, you'll see alerts appearing um, for you just to say, please check your contributions and make sure that they meet the minimum required. Okay, so it all depends on what, on what your original setting was basically there. So I hope that helps. Um, is there still a three-month postponement allowed for new employers? Yeah, 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 yeah there, there is. is. Just think of staging, really. Um, you know, the new duties, you know, for new employees, duties are very much the same as they are for when, you know, for those that got a staging date. So, yes, you can use um, three-month postponement if need be. Vicky's probably going to be answering the majority <laughs> of these questions. <laughs> um, must a company with only two employees who are both owner-directors, must they still register for auto-enrollment? I always feel this is such a minefield because it all depends on whether those directors, you know, whether there's contracts of employment in place and, and things like that. So that's what I would always say, just check with the pensions regulator. They will give you the, de the definitive answer, really. Um, the TPR website is great for giving you the criteria, especially for directors, actually. They, they list the various... I suppose, um, options you can have, you know, one director with an employment contract, one without and things like that. So, you know, they give you kind of the, the different answers there. So I would just recommend just checking that. Okay. Um, do BrightPay, do, do we have the template letters that I can send to employers and employees? Um, and they're referencing their the phased contributions. Yes. Yeah. Um, we are talking about doing a letter. It's not something that BrightPay would currently do, but I know the developers have, you know, there's been a common request in and people asking, are we going to do the letters? Pension providers are, you know, they should be the ones also sending out correspondence to, to their members. So anybody you've enrolled um, into a pension scheme should really, you know, the pension provider should, should be communicating with them too. But yes, I think we're certainly looking at, at doing something there. And I, th I think is, is the pensions regulator also sending out correspondence directly yeah, to employers? Yeah, I, I think we've heard that, that you know, TPR have been sending out mm -hmm. um, letters as well. Okay. Um, if a staff member has left before 12 months of the pension scheme, do they have to be re-enrolled? Um, no, they don't. So the criteria for re-enrollment is if somebody has opted out or voluntarily ceased being in the pension scheme um, 12 months or more. So if it's within the last 12 months of your re-enrollment date, then no, there's, there's no obligation to re-enroll them there. Um, when does the redeclaration of compliance have to be submitted? Um, again, you've got that five-month deadline from your re-enrollment date. So again, similar to when staging happened and you had your five months there to do the declaration of compliance, re-enrollment is the same there. Okay. Um, sorry, oh, sorry, just bear with me. Sorry, I clicked through your no, <laughs> screen. Okay. Um, what if your only member of staff starts and leaves within the same month? Um, 
Yeah, here, I mean, you could use the postponement option as well. Um, yeah, that's probably the best thing to do, I would say. Um, I suppose that's another one where I mean, we might not know that the member's leaving, you know, so you might have enrolled them because yeah. you've got a duties, you know. Um, you've got your duties to perform in that first pay period in which their start date falls, really. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, you could enroll... Um, yeah, but it's, it's yeah, it's yeah. You you typically you'd really postpone them if if you if you can if you can yeah, and that, that's what that th that postponement option really is for for if people are on probation, or if you don't have your pension scheme set up. But just bear in mind, any employees that are, are postponed have the option to opt in or join, and that's their right under automatic enrolment. But a lot of people are using postponement for that very same purpose. Yeah. Okay. Is it possible to get a report out of BrightPay showing just those who need to be re-enrolled and those not currently in a scheme? It is. Um, if I can just click into the software, if I may, here. Um, I, I just have to just use my company I have here. Um, I suppose the best report to do, if you go into the analysis function here, just close this one here. If you click on New and into Payroll Report, what you'll be choosing here is, I suppose, the the period in which your re-enrollment date is falling, so choose, you know, if, you, if you're working on months or weeks, or which, which, whatever's applicable here, so just choose, you know, that period here, that from and to, to be the period in which your re-enrollment date is coming into effect. Okay. What you can then do is add and remove here, um, let me just have a fresh start here. So you could select name and surname, and if you just pop into the period tab, if you choose all of these options here, this will give you a report really as, as I suppose what the current status of everybody is in this pay period that you've chosen here. If I just run reports, you can see here, um, this is my current stage. So I can see that I've got eligible, you know, my eligible people and I can see an enrollment <coughs> date. I can also see if they've opted out. Um, so again, just checking those opt out dates if they're more than 12 months. Um, outside of your re-enrollment date that will tell you then at a glance that that person will need to be re-enrolled. For example, people who are being assessed as knowledgeable and entitled workers, there's, you know, you've nothing to do for those because they're not meeting the criteria. So a report like that would probably be the best to, to run in the software. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry, just bear with me while we... What do you do when the option says that the staging date could not be determined after choosing to connect to the pensions regulators website? Um, when a staging date can't be determined, it, basically the software, our software is feeding in your PYE reference number to the pensions regulator. So it could be, I mean, first of all, check that the PYE, PYE number that you have entered in BrightPay is correct. And if it is, it could be then that the, the pensions regulator just have no trace of that, mm -hmm. um, of that company reg, you know, the company POE number. Um, so I would just maybe contact the pensions regulator to discuss with them. And they yeah, should be they able just to say at the end of that question to retrieve my duty start date. So your duty start date will, will be when the new employee commences. And says if it's after the 1st of October. Um, but the pensions regulator wouldn't have... Or, or not if it's a new employer. Yeah, yeah. yeah they might exactly. just not know about you. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want to change percentages at a later date, do you need to make a new group to change them? That will all depend on your pension provider. Um, somebody like, um, I'm just trying to think, um, Nest, for example, I suppose using Nest again, they don't require you to, you know, sometimes they just allow you to uplift, you know, if you've got them in a group for you just to change them um, on the employee's pay slip. Um, other pension providers do require you, you know, they're pretty much set in stone. So um, if you do wish to change percentages, they might require you to set up a new group and move your employees to that new group. And um, so that would be just one to um, check with the pension provider themselves. Again, if I just pop back into the software here, um, if you do need to switch groups, then if I choose an employee here that I've enrolled, 
you can see here that we have a switch option. So if you're with a pension provider that does require you to, to pop them into a new group, um, you use the switch button and you can quickly move them into, you know, say they're in weekly and want them now to go into monthly, you can use that option there and you can switch them there. Okay, so it's, it's seamless from our side of things, but as I say, just check with the pension provider in question what they require you to do. Um, can Brightpay automatically populate the enrollment letter with company name and address? Um, I'll just check again, just off the top of my head. Um, Okay, yeah, we don't actually, we just put in the employees um, one. Um, yep, so we don't at the moment, no. Okay. Okay. You can pop the signature on there, yeah. Um, so I'm just checking there, yeah, we don't. Um, margins can be moved up and down, however, um, if you know if you had heady paper or anything like that that you wanted to put the, you know, um, the, the letters on to, so that would be one workaround for you. Um, once the auto-enrollment flags have been cleared, what is the process for opting in an employee? Yeah, so if you are in the payroll utility here, um, You'll see here that, you know, you, you, your flags may have, sorry, I'll just pop him back to say he's just 150 there, just pop his pay back. You know, you have no flags. So if an employee comes along and they wish to opt in, you can't access that opt-in um, button from the payroll. So what you need to do then is go into employees, choose the employee, um, and they have an automatic enrollment utility on their menu bar. Every employee has that. And here you'll see the option to opt in. And you can just pop in the opt-in date there. and that employee is now opted in for you, okay? Um, just another question now. I always approve the payments once I have submitted the pension information. Is this a correct way of doing it or are you better logging into Nest and make payment? So that question is, is just related to Nest. Um, if you have any experience of Nest, you may have discovered that once you've put your contributions through to them, even though you've opted for direct debit with them, they don't take the contribution money di you know, directly. You still have to go in and, and basically authorize them to take the payment. So there's two options available. You can every, I suppose, every period log into Nest and hit the make payment button. Or you can actually um, use BrightPay to do that. So again, if I just go into pensions here and approve payments, here you'll see you can actually approve um, the payment here. So you can click to say, look, take, take the money now, basically. So one or the other, there's no right or wrong. Um, so whatever basically suits you best. Um, Obviously, sometimes if you're in bright pay and you've just put all your contributions through and you're happy, you may as well use the approve payments button. Or, you know, if you have time and you're logging into Nest anyway, um, then yes, certainly um, you can use that option too. Okay. Um, I'm unable to connect my software with Standard Live. Should I talk to support um, for the submission of reports? Certainly, if you want to give our support team a ring, first of all, um, it could be something that we can resolve for you. Um, We'll probably know for sure if you want to just talk through the issue you're having. If it's something that we feel that it, it needs to go back to standard life, then um, certainly, um, you know, we can let you know that. But if, yeah, if you want us to be the first port to call that, that's no problem at all. Okay. So I think the next question might be for BrightPay Connect. How, how do I upload contracts for employees and to make sure that only admin and employee can access it? So... If you if you want to give if you, you you can set up BrightPay Connect and then the employee will only see information that's applicable to them themselves and then you can set up other employees for example just to 
to approve holiday leave and then they won't see any of the other employee information like their like their pay slips or, or payroll reports or any other sensitive information. So that is the setting within Brightpay Connect. Um, and I think the second one there as well might be for Connect as well. So how can I set up a system for a request to make sure that the is that the same question? Sorry, Vicky. Sorry. Um, sorry. How can I set up the system for a request to make sure that the head of department can see it, but without? But yeah, so that's the same question. Um, does does the software remind us about re-enrollment duties? Yes, you'll you'll have alerts once your re-enrollment date, date is comes entered. around, and you can edit that re-enrollment date three months either side, um, if you so wish. Um, do you do you have any plans to batch pay slip emails like RTIs? I'm wondering if this is just um, obviously on the open company screen in BrightPay, you can batch um, RTI, you know, if you have any full oh, pay yeah. submissions, you can do them in a batch for mm. a number of employers. Um, I don't know. I, I haven't heard it mentioned, mm -hmm. um, but I can, we can certainly um, ask, yeah, you know. We can certainly add, add it to the, the list of things. And I suppose BrightPay Connect is, is our, our new add-on product that, that does... Um, I suppose resolve that issue, you know, once you finalise your, your payslip for your clients, they're automatically available on Brightpay Connect um, for the employees, so you don't have to send or email your, your payslips to people. Um, the next question is, I presume 50% isn't available for existing users. So the 50% is off Brightpay 1718, so if you're an existing customer, you would have already purchased 1718. It isn't a discount off 1819. Um, the next question, what is the cost of Connect as an existing payroll license holder? So for Connect, it's £49 plus VAT per employer. There are significant discounts for bulk purchases. Um, and the more BrightPay Connect licenses you buy, the cheaper it becomes. Um, and those prices are available on our website if you just go to the menu system and have a look at the pricings tab. Um, so how easy would it be to import payroll information from a previous software provider to BrightPay? So Vicky? Yeah, um, it's, yeah, we've tried to make it as seamless as possible. Um, and it all depends on who your previous software provider is. The likes we have um, kind of a, a fairly seamless import from Sage and from Iris, MoneySoft, QTAC and 12Pay. Um, so, um, so those are, what, those are supposed to be the key ones there. Um, also as well, you can import using an FPS submission from your previous software, or if, it's what, if you're with a software provider that I haven't just mentioned, then you can also bring in, um, you can use a CSV file, so if you can export out your information from your previous software to CSV file, then we can import it in. Um, as always, and I know it's not always possible, but if you can, I suppose, migration is always easiest at the start of a tax year. It really is because you don't have any mid-year kind of cumulatives to bring in, you know, all their pay information. Um, obviously, it's not always possible, but that would be the most seamless time to move across. Okay. Um, but if you, want, if you want to do it, you know, now at the moment and avail of the offer, you know, if you're having difficulty, you can call the support line and they'll help you with the process. Um, so we'll, do, we'll certainly do what we can to make it as easy as possible yeah. for you. And we have a number of help sheets on our online documentation on the website as well for the various providers yeah. there. Okay. Um, okay, so will Bright Page you the ladders for re-enrollment? Um, yes, exactly, yeah, uh, just similar to what, what happens, it's, you know, now with, with your duty start date, re-enrollment will be the same. So anybody who is re-enrolled will get a re-enrollment letter. Okay. Um, does the increase in pension contributions apply to entitled workers and non-eligible job holders who have opted in? Non-eligible, yeah, um, yes, because um, there, there is an employer contribution mm -hmm. as well. Um, entitled workers, there's only an obligation for the, um, the entitled worker to contribute, not yeah. the employer. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, so can you include your existing scheme into the system together? With your auto enrollment scheme, I'm not sure. 
they're asking uh, can you include your existing scheme into bright pay together with the auto enrollment scheme we currently have two schemes one was set up prior to auto enrollment um yeah i'm, I'm not, not sure what, what angles this is coming from i mean yes we do have the option in the software here so just go into the pensions <coughs> utility here um, add new scheme. Obviously people have traditional pension schemes still in operation and um, so we do facilitate all of these here and they can be set up alongside an auto enrollment scheme as well. As well people that have had traditional schemes in place and they meet the you know and then obviously duties kick in for auto enrollment if that pension scheme meets the criteria for auto enrollment then of course then you can then reset that scheme up as another automatic enrollment scheme or if it's one of the ones listed and um, you can then um, you know set up the auto enrollment scheme using one of the dedicated options here okay um, so will Scottish widows be included in the API in the future so as I said um, just in the webinar it's up to the pension provider themselves to develop the API and once the pension provider develops that API we have the facility then to plug in to that API so um, at the moment I haven't heard of any plans for Scottish widows to, that have that they're going to develop an API so um, I suppose no is, is the short answer there um, next question is BrightPay separate or is it an upgrade with BrightPay so I suppose BrightPay is, is your payroll is, is a separate price and then if you want BrightPay Connect as an add-on, you just buy that separately for £49 plus VAT per employer and then as I said there's significant discounts and um, the more licenses that you buy. Um, now we're doing for time so we might just take a few more questions. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to find some that, um let me see. What what if an employee doesn't want to increase the new contribution levels? Can they stay at one percent? Um, the answer is is no. Um, I suppose, yeah. I mean, from a bright pay point of view, they can reduce it down. You'll, you'll get constant reminders that they're below the minimum. Yeah. Um. So, but it does still allow you to go ahead and finalise pay slips. Mm. Um. So, but would they be compliant if they're paying below the total minimum? You know, the employer and the employee or. Do I need to, I can look into that. Yeah, we're looking, I think, I mean, they, I think they do have, you know, they can turn around and say, no, you know, I, I, I don't want to do it, but then yeah. obviously they're not auto enrollment compliant then. Yeah, um, yeah. maybe they want to opt yeah. out or something and then, yeah. Yeah, okay. so we can certainly look into that. Um, uh, just to give us a second here now, just reading, just reading down, yeah. I'm um, just, somebody just asking just to explain the approved payments again for Nest. Um, could you explain what the approved payments are for Nest? Do we need to log into the Nest website to push the payment through? So yes, yeah, so I suppose when Nest first kind of went live, um, we didn't have the option to be able to do anything through BrightPay. So it did require, if you're using BrightPay and you're putting your submissions through, it did require the user to um, log in <coughs> to the Nest portal separately and hit the make payment button. What we then developed in BrightPay um, was the option to um, to be able to, to, I suppose, do the equivalent of that make payment button that you press in the Nest portal. So that's what the approved payments option is here, if I just bring it up here. Um, so um, so it's, you can do either, basically. You don't, have to, you don't have to do it both, you know, it's one or the other. So um, a lot of users now, they go to... A, you know, basically to let Ness know, look, you can take the money from us now, they use this approved payments option. And what that does, it just submits the request through to Nest from our software. Okay. And um, so it's something we didn't have at the start, but we now do there. Um, and it is, you know, as soon as you hit approved payments in BrightPay, that, that then triggers the direct debit. Yeah. Then, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So does BrightPay Connect include Bright Contracts? So no, Bright Contracts is another product that we have for employee handbooks and, uh, and contracts. We do have bundle deals um, as of last year on our website, which we, you could buy BrightPay, BrightPay Connect and Bright, Bright Contracts, and there is significant discounts again. So I just refer you there to our website because there's a number of different options depending on how many licenses that you want. 
Um, okay, we understand there is a bureau license fee. Do you then charge per employee payslip uploaded? So no, BrightPay is your, it's 229 plus VAT and that includes unlimited employees, unlimited employers, auto enrollment, payslips, free support. There's no hidden charges with BrightPay at all. I, I suppose unlike our competitors, we, we don't, we don't, that just includes absolutely everything for you. So 229 plus VAT and then the only additional option that we have is BrightPay Connect for your your cloud backup and employee access and employer access as well. So we might just take one more question and um, then if we didn't get back to people, we will contact them directly. Um, there has been just a couple of questions that we haven't got around to, just about GDPR coming into effect. Um, as you may be aware, that's coming the 25th of May. Um, so, uh, you know, a couple of questions, is BrightPay GDPR compliant and if payslips are emailed, will they be data protection ready? So we are working behind the scenes on mm -hmm. the GDPR, putting a lot of time into it. On our website, we do have a GDPR page, which will give you a little bit more information of what we're doing and how it's going yeah. to work. And um, so by all means, please do, you know, check that out there. Yeah. We are running um, a, a webinar specifically on GDPR. So um, that would be good. I know I'm still trying to get my head around what GDPR is and how it's going to affect us and, and the data that you hold. So again, just go onto the website and if you click on the support tab and down to the events tab that you can see there's a, a GDPR webinar over the next few weeks. Okay. Um, there are a few questions we haven't been able to get to. There's a good few coming in, so we're just conscious of time. So if we haven't answered your questions, we will get back to you yes. um, via email there. Absolutely. Okay. So thanks. Um, thanks to everybody. We will send on a recording of the webinar to, to everybody in a couple of days. So thanks to Vicky and thanks to Rachel who's been there and the, and the tech scenes. support <laughs> behind the scenes making sure everything is, is running seamlessly for you and um, have a good day. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.